Whenever Aston Villa and Nottingham Forest meet, they turn the clock back to a golden era for English club football. I mean, it still seems like a Premiership game, or it should be played in the Premiership. I mean, both former European Cup winners, uh, middle and neighbours, really. To anyone else, it's just a normal game, which, you know, it's not going to get much media attention, but, you know, the fans of old, my parents, it means so much to them back in the day because they were two massive clubs two massive clubs of such a famous era for English football. When Villa won the European Cup and, and Forest as well, it was more or less expected. Uh. Absolutely uh, massive when you look at what both Nottingham Forest and Aston Villa have done in the past. When they play, it's also the only time two former European Cup winners line up against each other in the second tier. That includes anywhere in Europe, surely making it the most prestigious match in championship history in terms of their trophy cabinets. Forest Villa were huge teams back in the late 70s, early 80s. You know, my dad tells me stories, great stories, European Cup winners, double champions, league champions, you know, league cups, they won everything. I think both sets of fans are proud of where they've come from and what, what they've done in the past, but it's all about the present at the moment, unfortunately. Although we're both in a low division, um, those of us that were there in those days couldn't remember what it was like when we were at the top. The games we had against Forest in the 70s were just fantastic, you know, and there were such great rivalries. The success of Nottingham Forest came in the late 70s when they were managed by the late, great Brian Clough. We were struggling a bit, even when Brian Clough came for those. Maybe in this day and age, people would be getting on his back and wanting him, wanting him out, I don't know. I remember shouting at Peter Shelton because the, there was a bit of gamesmanship with Clough's teams when they needed to. And, you know, that's what you wanted to aspire to and eventually we managed to do it. They stuck with him and uh, the football was just totally different. It was such an exciting time and it just, every match was seen to be winning every match and it, it went on and on and on. It was absolutely incredible. The provincial club went from finishing 16th in Division 2 in 1975 to winning the title in 1978 before going on to lift the European Cup two years in a row. You know, people forget that before the Champions League, it was the European Cup, it's the same trophy. Real Madrid, they retained it last year. Was it AC Milan, you know, the time before that? Then it's us. So we've got to always remember that. And Brian Clough and Peter Taylor were one of a kind. So we were never supposed to be that good. We were never supposed to be there, but we got there and we sustained it for so long. But like everything, those good things come to end. As for Villa, their joys soon followed. In 1981, Ron Saunders led the Claret and Blues to the First Division Championship using just 14 players. A year later, Villa lifted the European Cup after seeing off German giants Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich was so on top, we just looked at each other and said, we've just got to enjoy this because we're not going to win it. So to actually win it in the end was absolutely unbelievable. Peter with the goal, yeah, I think it was 23 minutes from the end, uh, scored the goal off his shin and it was just one of those stunning moments. And, and I can remember looking at the clock and I think there were 23 minutes to go and I, I thought I'm not going to look at this clock again uh, and I looked it seemed like an hour later and there was 22 minutes to go uh, so it was an awful long time but a, a fantastic feeling when that final whistle went. Villa's fortunes came crashing down within just five years of winning the most coveted competition on the continent and by the time the conclusion of the 1986-87 season came around they were relegated. I think it was, it was, it was a case of bad management that uh, caused it and uh, uh, changing things too quickly and not building on the success that they that, that they'd achieved. Really. Well, I think once Ron Saunders went, Tony Bart was a lovely man, but he just wasn't up to management. Doug Ellis made the wrong decision of bringing in Graham Turner, and again, he wasn't up to the job. And the decline just continued from there, and just one band appointments after another. As for Forrest, their demise was not so rapid. Clough could never achieve the highs of the late 70s as his troops rolled into a new decade. There will never be another manager like Clough. We've sort of done all right on the odd, for the odd season since then, but I don't know why. There's nobody who's got that knack with Clough in. I don't think managers can treat players like probably Clough who could get away with it. For my generation, it's tough because we hear these amazing stories and you know what, I, what my dad went through, how he got to Munich when they went to Madrid. It's just these incredible stories and you know, we're, we're, we're never going to see it again. Both current situations are a world away from the glory years when British sides ruled Europe. Once on top of the continent, both clubs now find themselves languishing in the second tier, but both not without some hope. It's weird now because we were the originators of the Premier League um, and we'd been in it right until a few years ago, so we're just getting used to the decline now, whereas I think Forests have been declining for a number of years. We are where we are because of 
how we've been over the last five to ten years. It's there's no we deserve to be anywhere because of our history. That's you can't look at it like that. You you're a fool if you if that's how you think. We're a sleeping giant. That's for sure. I think if if anyone can take the ball by the horns, they can make this club great again. I think the biggest hope for all of us now is that we get back into the Premier League. I don't think any of us are thinking about getting into Europe yet. You've only got to look at Manchester City, you know, a few years ago, they were where we were, um, but just through new owners and enormous amount of investment, they're in the Champions League now, and it looked like they could win it this season, so there's always hope. I think you've got, always got to believe, you've got to believe that you're going to get back there. It's, it's, like I keep reiterating, there's no point being a football fan if, if you don't believe it.